Okay, uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Thanks for being here. Uh, this is the last presentation of the day. Um, it's a good thing to be presenting at the last because you will remember this for the rest of the day, right? <laughs> so, uh, my name is Giridhar Jayavelu. I'm from VMware. Um, I'm presenting this on behalf of uh, my colleague Yang Yu also. Uh, she couldn't make it for the summit. So, this is going to be about uh, some of the NFE capabilities we constantly hear from uh, some of our customers. Um, the key requirements that uh, we have pretty much on virtual machine and it's being uh, expanded or extended to the Kubernetes land also. Um, so, yeah, uh, before I get going with uh, the requirements at the high level, so Kubernetes is a container orchestration platform, uh, which is known for its uh, um, uh, better scheduling capabilities, self-healing and uh, you know, auto, auto scaling and all those uh, features, right? Um, and it has a bunch of uh, cloud provider integration. So, for example, uh, there are integration with, with uh, Amazon, Google Cloud, OpenStack, and VMware, a bunch of things. And this presentation is going to be mostly focused on the OpenStack provider. So, uh, some of the common services to which um, the cloud provider that on upstream Kubernetes integrates is with uh, uh, Neutron, Keystone, Nova, and Cinder. Uh, Cinder is used for all the persistent volume. and. No, obviously, that's where the, uh, the Kubernetes worker nodes are run, and the kubelets constantly query the Nova instances to get the, uh, the status of the worker node, and then uh, you know, if, if it needs to schedule anything, everything happens via the Nova uh, instance information. And Keystone is something that is used for authentication purposes, so anytime somebody would want to uh, launch an application on Kubernetes, they can, they can be authenticated against Keystone. And Neutron is used for all the uh, service load balancing and other capabilities. Right. Some of the capabilities, as I mentioned, that we are going to focus here is the uh, secure multi-tenancy. And uh, there's also an important need for multiple interfaces at the level of Kubernetes pods. Pod is nothing but a logical grouping of multiple containers in the, in the Kubernetes land. And data plane acceleration. So how do we expose all the rich um, hardware capabilities like SRIO, V, or DPDK, and all those things, how do we expose that into the containers is something that is being uh, you know, uh, regularly asked in the field. And uh, the last but not least, the enhanced platform awareness, uh, which is, again, none of this is new uh, with respect to OpenStack. I mean, the, all these requirements applies to virtual machines also. Now, the, the important ask is how do we expose these things into the containers? And uh, the other thing is also the important aspect is about running virtual machines and containers, the workloads, VNFs and container network function in, in parallel. So that is the basic premise with which we are going to be spending time on this one. Right? Uh, before I jump into uh, multi-tenancy, I want to quickly talk about namespace. It's a construct in uh, Kubernetes. It allows to logically group all the resources and allocate resources uh, like CPU, memory, GPU, and all those things uh, for, for uh, the containers in Kubernetes, right? So the first important requirement that we are looking at is the secure multi-tenancy. So multi-tenancy, it's an it's a open term. A lot of people interpret it in a different way. For somebody, it's uh, authentication and authorization. For some, it's resource allocation. For some people, even go down to the extent of if I'm doing a monitoring, how can a tenant monitor the statistics that are relevant only to them. I mean, um, and even at a log file, like when you're looking at the logs, how do you um, uh, exclusively show the contents that are specific to a particular tenant? So there are multiple layers in which you can extend the uh, uh, tenancy model. And what we are specifically uh, being asked is about resource guarantees. So most of you might have heard this overbooking concept in the airline system, or some of you might have been yanked out uh, from an airplane in term, you know, whenever there's an overbooking happens. So that's the kind of scenario we are looking at here. Right? But given a, given a, a, a very well-constrained system, let's say you're looking at an edge use case, you have a single box where you want to run two different services. Um, today, the most of the system allows to put a limit on the CPU, memory, and the other resources, but none of them guarantees uh, the resource allocation. I mean, we have a way to guarantee resource for a given pod or a given VM, but there is no way to guarantee re uh, resources for a given service or a given tenant, which means that, let's say, Coke and Pepsi are trying to deploy their services on an edge cloud. Uh, in, during contention, we want Coke to get whatever resources that they have been already allocated. Uh, but if 
nobody is using it, they should be able they should be able to burst and utilize the full uh, capacity. Otherwise, we are talking about underutilization, and it's not really virtualization uh, in this case, right? So this is one of the important aspects where uh, there's a lot of gap uh, in, in both OpenStack and obviously it, it uh, extends all the way to Kubernetes also. Uh, so what we are looking at is taking the namespace construct and how we can reserve capacity for a given tenant, right? So a basic representation of namespace in Kubernetes looks like this where you can um, set some limitations for CPU and memory. Uh, but what we need is a, an ability to reserve capacity. So since currently there is no way to do that in a, in a, within a VM, what we are looking at is leveraging some of the hypervisor capabilities. For example, ESXi or vSphere, it has a construct called resource pool which can give you a reservation. So you can create a resource pool and specify what is the minimum reservation that you want to give for, let's say, Coke. And the hypervisor will ensure that the capacity is allocated for a given tenant. And the same thing, so whenever the uh, Kubernetes worker nodes are placed on this resource pool, so all the pods running within that resource pool will automatically get this capability. Right, the same thing applies to networking also. So we need to be able to map uh, the namespace into the network also. For a given tenant, when they are deploying uh, uh, their pods within a namespace, they should have a clear isolation on, uh, on their topology also. For example, every namespace should have its own logical switch and a logical router. So there is clear demarcation between tenant A and tenant B, and that's the topology that you see on the right side. We have a foo and bar. There's clearly like the entire topology is divided between these two different tenants. Right, and the next important requirement is to have multiple interfaces on a pod. Today in Kubernetes, when you're deploying a pod, every CNI plugin out there can give only one interface within a pod. And clearly in the case of NFE, even if you take a simple firewall uh, network function, it requires minimum of two interfaces, right? Um, and even for other purposes, like, like uh, for network redundancy, if you're looking for a failure, there should be always redundancy in terms of the network uh, link that you have out there. Um, so. What we are looking for is having multiple interfaces exposed to the same pod. Um, so the Multi CNI plugin, it's, a, uh, um, it's an incubator project driven by Intel right now, um, allows you to register multiple CNI plugins. So basically, Multi acts as a broker CNI plugin uh, with which you can register multiple CNI plugin for uh, individual interfaces. So in this example, I've shown an NSX uh, container plugin. NSX is the SDN from VMware. So we have a container plugin for, uh, uh, for Kubernetes. So the topology you have here is like for redundancy purposes, we are registering two different NCP plugin so that you can attach two interfaces to a given pod for redundancy, redundancy reason. And let's say the same thing if you want to do it for a control plane and user plane separation. And uh, for data plane, let's say if you want to use DPDK or SRIOV, you can use Mac VLAN CNI plugin and register that for your second interface. And the workflow is like this. Whenever a kubelet is, gets a, uh, a command to create a pod, it sends the uh, control to the network plugin and Multus receives it. It creates the first interface based on the master CNI plugin. Once that interface is created, it offloads it to the, the mini and CN, the second CNI plugin, which will go on and create the additional interfaces. And the last one is the uh, EPA capabilities. So things like uh, when you want to deploy pods that can leverage some of the capabilities like huge pages, CPU pinning, and all those things at a virtual machine level, uh, we need to be able to expose these capabilities on these worker nodes so that the Kubernetes scheduler will be automatically able to place the pods on the right nodes. There are multiple ways to do, but one of the common approach is labeling these nodes with their capabilities. And uh, again, node feature discovery is one of the capabilities driven by Intel. And then um, what it does is it queries the hardware capabilities like CPU and SRIV and all those things and publishes these capabilities as labels so that Kubernetes scheduler can do that. It works great in case of a hardware, like a bare bundle deployment, but when you're looking at a virtual machine, basically if you're running Kubernetes using a, a virtual instances, then these capabilities are not very well exposed. So what we have done is enhance the node feature capability to query some of the, uh, the open uh, NOVA instances and get the flavor information. Basically, every time you deploy an OpenStack instance, there's a flavor associated with that. We can query that information via metadata or directly talk to the flavor 
and get all the uh, capabilities that are associated to a particular instance and label them so that Kubernetes scheduler can place pods accordingly. And lastly, I want to uh, highlight the uh, integration that we have done with uh, VMware integrated OpenStack. Kubernetes, there is a native integration available it's a, uh, that you can deploy with uh, Vio. And uh, we have enhanced these capabilities that we are talking about, and then we are trying to fill the gaps. Uh, for example, how to uh, handle the multi-tenancy at the virtual machine level rather than how into the hypervisor and things like that. So um, yeah, that's all my talk. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>